could have champion written all over, and that's what some people believe. Jimmy Lennon is in the center of the ring to kick things off. Let's go to Jimmy now. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This bout coming your way is scheduled for eight rounds of boxing. This time we feature lightweights in action. Presenting the judges at ringside, Doug Tucker, John McSweeney, Keith McDonald, and the referee in charge of this bout is Norm Budden. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing white trunks with blue trim and hailing from Huatawampo, Sonora, Mexico. He weighed in at 135 and three quarter pounds. His record includes 15 wins, three losses, 11 wins by way of knockout. Please welcome Panchito Lopez. And his opponent across the ring. On my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this eight round lightweight bout. He is wearing white trunks with green trim. From Arlita, California, he is representing the world famous Ten Goose Boxing Club in North Hollywood. He weighed in the same weight of 135 and three quarter pounds. His outstanding record includes 29 wins, only one defeat, 23 wins by way of knockout. He's ranked the number eight contender in the world by the WBC as a lightweight. Introducing Rafael Ruela. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Norm Budden. Gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. At this time, with any questions, nope. remember, protect yourselves at all times. Good luck. So we kick it off, an eight-rounder. It's an interesting metaphor after a bout with a football player. Yeah, it's true, yes. <laughs> you got to be careful about what, <laughs> which metaphor you use after that, huh? It is eight rounds. It is in the lightweight division. Rafael Rulles, ranked eighth by the WBC against Panchito Lopez, who comes in here with a very representative 15-3 record. See how he can stand up against the power of Rafael. For those of you who may not have seen Rafael box before, he is got tremendous power in both hands and uh, is a boxer Bert that many people believe could be just a couple of fights away from a championship match well his brother fought in the same ring last night right here and scored a first round knockout Gabriel. so I'm sure that Raphael would like to duplicate that effort and they often fight on the same card and have a very friendly competition to see who does well and I you often see two brothers that box, and sometimes they, they root for each other very well, sometimes they don't. These two do. Well, one of the, uh, the, these are two of the crown jewels of the Goosen stable. And basically, both have been office boys whom the Goosens uh, uh, first declined to handle, and they wanted to be fighters. And this is what they got, success upon success. Well, Joe Goosen, who trains them, worked with them when they were amateurs, brought them into the pro ranks. There is Rafael, and look at the body shot. Send Lopez down immediately. So here in round one already, the body punching of Rafael Rulas has made a big impact. Halfway through round one, and boy, we might, might not get to the end of round one. Again. Rulas' only loss was when he miscalculated after having been knocked down the 10 count, if you remember. Got up just after the 10 count, was looking over in his corner, was okay, but didn't get up in time and paid the price. And he will go back to the body, and yes, he does, he and he creates the second. Badly to the liver. He is not going to get up. He's, it's over. So Rafael Rulas scores a stunning first round knockout win. Goes to 30 and 1 and 24 KOs. And so it's a big win for Rafael Rulas. As you said, with the, the KO record of him, it shows that you, he has the power, Bert. What? He has more than enough power. Uh, it's, it's, it's rare, too, that you see somebody knock somebody out with just body punches. And the body work that Rafael Rilles did 
was very special here in the first round. He saw that it worked and just kept going to it. One of those straight a little low, but that one quite effective for Rellis. And down he goes. Here's the second knockdown. This one was a superb left hook downstairs. Right to the ribs, and it was just too much for Lopez. There he goes. And you, and you saw the double left hook coming from Rulas. He is such a good technical fighter that when you throw that left, you'll see him throw the left to the body. And by instinct, he's throwing the left to the head. See, as he's going down, because that's what you're told to do. And Rulas landed 64% of his power shots in that round. Let's go up to Jimmy Lennon and get the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, two seconds at round number one. The referee in charge, Norm Budden, stops the contest. The winner by way of TKO, Rafael Ruela. So Rafael Ruelas, a big winner in a first round TKO, and he now joins Bert Sugar up there. They are just about set to go, I guess. Let's go up to Bert now. Congratulations, Edgar. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know that I saw enough to tell you how good you look, but did you feel good in there? Oh, I felt great. I felt real strong. You know, I had been working. I worked in Vegas for one week with Greg Hagen, and I appreciate it. I really thank Hagen for, you know, picking us to come to his camp. Also here in the arena, we were three weeks, and we worked real hard. The altitude, you know, really at the beginning, it sort of, in uh, the first week we were here, it sort of got to us a little bit, but we got used to it, and it helped. I feel great. I feel real strong. What happened when your brother won in one round last night? Did that stimulate you to duplicate it? Well, I wasn't going out there to try to, you know, do what he did or to try to outdo him. But, yes, I, I did want to get the knockout. I, I, I thought, I felt that it was going to come because I was feeling really strong. And up until, you know, two or three days before today, you know, I rested and I felt just real strong. What next or should I go to the gentle person yes, on your left? Uh, Joe Goosen, I've you heard. know how these interviews go. Yeah, what, so would like, you, yeah. what would you ask yourself? Well, I really wouldn't ask myself. What I would say is this, is that really Rafael Reles and his brother both, I think this is really the turning point. Even though the people they fought and maybe the amount of rounds they fought weren't enough, but to me, what they did with these guys were, was exactly what they were supposed to do. And I really think at this point of their career, Rafael number eight, Gabriel number one, they're both ready for world titles. And uh, we've been waiting around a long time, and I think now that Gabriel's number one, Rafael number eight, and he'll move up again, I think, this month, that they're both ready for world titles. And that, that's it in a nutshell. But you're going to have to make them, and who are you looking to, to make them? Well, obviously, uh, everyone knows Pernell Whitaker vacated the 135-pound title. Uh, he had all three uh, championships, at least that's the... Uh, he, he left one of them, I think. Well, I know that he's moving up to 140, and I have a feeling he's not going to make 35 again. So there's a big opportunity there for uh, one of the titles for Rafael to grab uh, very soon. As, uh, as for who we're looking for, anybody, really. It really doesn't matter as long as you get a shot at the title. Gabriel, of course, Gennaro Hernandez at 130 pounds, uh, Azuma Nelson at 130 pounds, and there's one other. But uh, I would really like to see Gabriel, and a lot of people are surprised that I feel this way, fight Azuma Nelson. But I, I think that Azuma's uh, the type of fighter that Gabriel would do well against. He's methodical like Gabriel, and uh, I just think he would fare very well against him. And we're looking forward to seeing you again, and hopefully in a championship fight. I'm looking forward to get that shot. God bless. Thank you, Bert. Thank you All very right. much. All right, thank you very much, Bert. And uh, young Gabriel Ross and his people, Joe Goosen, obviously hungering for a world championship match. And if he punches the way he did in this one, he'll uh, do quite well. Excellent percentage landed for him. And most of those were probably body punches in the 25. And uh, even though um, Panchito Lopez landed a good percentage, it did not work out too well for him. And uh, this is becoming the night of the whackout so far. A couple of early knockouts have sent us into some early finishes. Well, coming up is uh, going to be a very entertaining matchup that we'll be bringing you on pay-per-view. It's going to feature the cruiserweight champion, Bobby Chez, go taking on the former light heavyweight champ, Donnie Lalonde, who, of course, has been out of boxing for a little while, uh, let his title go, retired, but he is back again. There's Bobby Chez, who has given us lots of thrills, moving up three weight divisions from the 
middleweight to the light heavyweight, now to the cruiserweight. And for Bobby, he has been around a long time now, still a relatively young man. And for Donnie Lalonde, coming back at a time when some thought he might not. He has had his moments, he was light heavyweight champion, and from a style standpoint, that one should be a very interesting matchup. And the power of Lalonde and Chez will be on display May 8th on pay-per-view. We'll be at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas to bring you that one. And uh, that should be a 